I'm Jordan Lulich, this is the Lulich Corner, and today I've got the opportunity to sit down with Jonathan Raymond from Sea Winds Funeral Home. And so first, I'd like to give the opportunity to Jonathan to talk a little bit, introduce himself, and this is not your first time on the show, so we appreciate having you back on, and really thank you for taking the time to come on and share a little bit about yourself and Sea Winds and talk about funerals and, and things that people normally wouldn't want to talk about. As Jordan said, I'm Jonathan Raymond. Uh, Jordan, I had an opportunity to sit here last time with your dad. That's right. Uh, my condolences in his passing, and uh, we were honored to do his service, that's for sure, and the best to your family. Um, I wanted to come on with Jordan today and talk to you about funerals and cremations and the benefits to such services that we provide at Sea Winds Funeral Home and Crematory here in Sebastian, as well as Davis Sea Winds Funeral Home in Melbourne and Cox Gifford Sea Winds Funeral Home in Vero Beach, and uh, the benefits about preparing and pre-planning uh, your arrangements and your services. You know, when, when you think about a funeral, Jonathan, you know, why, where did they come about? Like where in history, like why, why do people have funerals? Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's something of not a lot of people have thought about, and it's kind of just this custom in society where, you know, we've got funerals and then it's devolved to, you know, afterlife celebrations, but where in history or where, where did we start doing that to begin with? I mean, have you ever looked at that? I have, yes. Um, well, everybody's aware of the Egyptian pyramids and um, as far back as history goes, Jordan, they have been paying tribute to those that have lived on this earth and, um, and the importance of remembering uh, those individuals. And, you know, some people uh, have the ability to uh, memorialize their loved ones in such a way as building a pyramid for one individual um, or the Taj Mahal, uh, something that, you know, we th we don't think about as uh, memorializing a loved one. You know, in India, that, that large monstrosity of a building is actually a tomb for a late wife of one of the rulers of India and himself, um, yet it has become a landmark. Uh, one of the seven wonders of the world, so to speak. But the need to be remembered uh, is what funeral service is all about. The need to realize that a life has been lived, pay tribute to that life, and to share that experience with other people in that community. Your opinion was that it was about the need to be remembered. So, I mean, the person who's passed away doesn't really have that need anymore. So is it more about executing the person's wishes to be remembered once they pass or about the their loved ones and their family and their friends that you know continue to survive past their demise so i think it's a combination of both i mean i don't know about you jordan but yeah. um i remember my parents mm -hmm. um i think that my parents lived as though they wanted to be remembered mm -hmm. and you know most of the time all we have to remember people by is a monument in a cemetery with someone's name on it and the date they were born and the date they died. Yeah, There's a lot of things that happen in that dash. So I believe that everyone lives on this planet to do make the best that they can to do. To make an impact. To make an impact and be remembered you. and become an important part of the family history. What's interesting is is even going through the process personally, it's, it's you know one of the things that I was told very early on in the process was we've moved away from this in society, from, from this... Um, sad event to one of a happy event to one of that's a celebration where you know black is no longer the custom is this a newer trend where we're we're celebrating one's life rather than you know um getting together dressed in black and and more you know being sad about the passing of one is this is that a newer trend that we're seeing or i was surprised to hear that you know in my mind growing up i always was told you know, funeral, you wear black to the funeral, um, and it, it's not a happy day. And when my dad and I, because we talked about things, and, and we when we talked about it, he always said that he wanted a celebration of life. And it kind of fits before, before I even said what we wanted to do, that was one of the things that one of your funeral directors told me. And so I found that that was interesting that, you know, it was a kind of in line what what he wanted, and it's in this newer trend that we're seeing. So what are your thoughts about that? Well, I've only been in funeral service for 30 years. Only. Um, <laughs> it's a long time. But um, what I've seen is that people like to be happy. And what I mean by that is happy and content with what they did for someone. Mm -hmm. And uh, we create uh, tributes that someone would want to remember instead of a funeral that one wants to forget. 
Um, funerals should not mean the end of something. It should mean the beginning of something for someone that has passed and also an opportunity for that individual or that individual's family to remember them in a positive light. Mm -hmm. So that personalization piece, the people that, you know, somebody said red was his favorite color, so everybody had to wear red. I mean, I've, I've bought red socks for my staff, red ties and things like that to memorialize and to pay tribute to someone's life. To remembering, pay tribute. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Remembering is something that we can't, you can't not remember. Yeah, you right? can't intentionally forget. You can't intentionally forget. You can put it down in your mind. Suppress um, it. Yeah. Right. Uh, you can suppress that pain. But, you know, we're not saying that uh, in the funeral service industry, we're not saying that every funeral should be fun and happy and bright. And, you know, it all depends on the circumstances of each individual right. funeral. But it's easier to remember something in a positive light. Yeah. So the, the thought of happy, maybe use the word positive, right? Um, it makes a big difference in someone's existence, continued existence. Right. So when your father passed, you feel comfort, as I do when my mom passed, that we did what we needed to do. Mm -hmm. We paid tribute to a life that was lived. And we remember that in a positive light instead of a negative light. Right. So I believe that everybody with the, the grayness or the, um, the overcast uh, conditions of our society and our world and sometimes can become a daunting task to be a positive person. Mm -hmm. So the loss of a loved one should not be one of those things. The loss of a loved one with preparation in that planning process to understand. I remember your dad said, uh, you know, I'd like to have a marching band and uh, a New Orleans style band and celebrate yeah. my life. Yeah. And um, I think that it's easier for you to remember that thought than it is for you to remember we didn't do anything and and we didn't pay tribute, and and why didn't we do this? You only get one chance to do something right. um, in a light that's positive and instead of one that could be overshadowed with a negative connotation of death being the end of something. Some of the people listening here, they might not have the experience to go through passing of a loved one recently. It might have been some time since they've gone through one. And one of the things I was just speaking with a client about last week was you know, there's, there's visitation, there's an actual service. And then in some cases, then there's also some type of afterlife celebration or some type of gathering of, you know, people afterward. And I know it's very subjective and it's very personal, but what, what trends do you see as far as these events and specifically the level of, of, uh, reception and the, and the, the, how public these events are, I guess, right. you know, it's, you know, you receive an invitation, right. And you see these three events, you know, and you're somewhat close to the person, maybe an acquaintance, but you're not on that personal level, you know, so is proper protocol to go to all of these events or to go to one event or, you know, I guess a little bit more insight on what's the norm and kind of what what trends do you see? Because I know it's very personal and it's very, you know, it could be very different for from family to family. It is. Um, you know, when you think about uh, what people have traditionally done, um, tradition, there's no, that word really doesn't mean anything in funeral service today. Services are regional, meaning certain things, for instance, in Florida, cremation is much higher than it is in any other part of the country. California, cremation is very high. Um, death is very inconvenient for people that are living. It's, um, you know, you don't have time to plan most of the time. Yep. Um, it happens out of the blue. Even if someone is ill and is expected to pass, it's never acceptable right. at that point in time. So when you think about what people choose for services, visitation gives an opportunity for family and friends to gather whether it's a private or public event, mm -hmm. to support each other, to remember, to say, hey, I remember the time that, you know, it was a privilege to sit with your dad. Um, no one knew that circumstance that would happen a short time after that. Right. And I actually asked your dad, I said, have you ever put any thought into planning? No, I haven't put any thought into planning, but this is what I think I'd like to do. He says, um, you know, this is the the type of service that I'd like to have. And your father was a very uplifting, positive man. Yes. And um, completely. when you think about that, coming together to celebrate that life as a community, most of the time, 
not most of the time, but oftentimes people don't even know the person that passed away, but they may have known you, right? whether it be from high school or they may have known your mom from somewhere. Right. So they come to support. And that's the person I was talking to. They, they received this invitation to all three of these events, but the, the person didn't even know the person who passed away. And it was the, it was the person's you know, close family member. Correct. So it's, it's going to, to support and be there for the people who are going through that, that tragic event, that, that unexpected event. Um, right. Or in some cases expected, but it's really never it's really never expected until it actually happens. You know, that's a great word, support. And in, in some religions or some communities, and I was actually talking to your father about this, in the in the Ghanaian culture, for instance, the whole community comes together because someone in the Ghanaian community passed. I said to your dad, I said, you know, uh, we don't open up the paper as a Catholic and look at every person that passed away that was having a mass at a Catholic church and just show up. Most of the people that attend a service of some sort have a relation with either the person that passed away or the family of that person or someone in that family. And the word that you used was support. Yeah. Um, we support each other through life. And um, the opportunity to do that in death is even as critical, if not more critical, because there's a time of desperation. Uh, we don't know where we're going the next day. We don't know what's gonna happen the next day. So those that visitation is a time to come together either publicly or privately to support one another. Showing up for your network, for your people, for your friends, and, That's and being there in those times of need. Exactly. I, absolutely, I'm a firm believer of that. So j just kind of as we start to wrap up this session, uh, what one question, I guess, or one or two questions that I have for you, you know, in, in thinking about we talked a little bit about visitation, then there's a service. So why, why don't you talk a little bit about what goes on in that service? And then for some families, they choose to do some type of celebration afterward. What have you seen? What What are different ideas just to, to make people, you know, have a little bit understanding of for people who have never been to an event like this, you know, what 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 to expect? Right. So services are, are like you said, subjective. That support is very important. The service aspect is very personal. Yeah. You know, maybe they didn't um, go to church, for instance, on a regular basis. So something may occur at the funeral home that where a clergyman comes to the funeral home and provides a, a way forward, a path forward, a belief that there is a tomorrow in the survivors' lives. Um, it gives an opportunity for people. We ask open-ended questions. Tell me a little bit about who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about what the individual that passed away means to you. Tell me what their passions in life were. Tell me what they enjoy doing. It's not simply, did they golf um, or did they play tennis? It's, tell me a little bit about the person so right. that I can better understand. That funeral service kind of brings together that person's life. And when we talk about planning for those events, you know, it's a two or three hour window that we sit down and talk about 60, 70, 80 years of life. Yeah. I mean, we plan for everything, uh, Jordan. We plan for sending our kids to school. We, we, we plan for their marriage. We plan for buying a house. We plan for a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, with death, and it's an emergent, it's right there on top. Yeah. We have to do something. What are we going to do? And, you know, for going through the process, and I've been to many services, but every time I attend a service, I always leave with closure. Closure that I've witnessed in the family that's going through that tragic event that maybe I don't know the person who passed or closure for myself, but it's not, not that the, the road's going to get any easier moving forward, but it's closure that, okay, we're going to go back to, to, you know, to, to our daily routine. And, and we, we can work to start healing those wounds and, you know, continue supporting each other, you know, as we continue to go about this life. Mm -hmm. And so for, as, as someone who's attended quite a few services, it's, it's closure for the people that, that attend the event It's closure for the family who puts it on. Um, and it's, it's closure knowing that what that person wanted was actually executed upon. Agreed. And I can't, I can't say it any better than that. Yeah. Closure is important for people. Uh, regardless of what it is, the task that you're, is set in, fr in front of you, closure of, a, of an event, mm -hmm. like you said, um, it's important for people to know that that support, the participation, um, the remembrance and the paying of tribute. And when you said, you know, some people even have an event after the funeral, right. um, a reception to get together, to continue to commemorate that life. Um, like I said, it's a period of three days, 
usually total. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's hard in three days to just say, okay, now it's over and let's go back. It would be like having a wedding without a reception. Yeah. Right? So um, all these major events in someone's life or in, in your life or in mine uh, deserve to be recognized and deserve to be uh, acknowledged. And processed. And processed. Yeah. And that's how you do it, step by step. Yeah. Um, and feel the pain and shed the tears yeah. um, and support each other through those events. Well, Jonathan, appreciate you coming on. That That's all we have time for for today. I'm Jordan Lulich with the Lulich Corner, and we'll see you next time.